What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the Tech Legend YouTube channel. In today's video, we are reviewing a brand new product from Prusa Research, the original Prusa SL1 3D printer. Also for your convenience, you can find the links to this product, right in the description down below. Without any more delay, let's get straight into this review. The Prusa Research original Prusa SL1, is an open source desktop resin 3D printer made by Prusa Research, a manufacturer from the Czech Republic. Prusa Research, formerly Prusa 3D, is led by Joseph Prusa, the original creator of the Prusa i3 3D printer model. The original Prusa SL1 is Prusa Research's first resin 3D printer, and it uses MSLA, stereolithography, 3D printing technology. This technology uses the 3D printer's high resolution LCD screen and UV LED to solidify photosensitive liquid resin. The Prusa SL1 resin 3D printer is easy enough to use for beginners, and hobbyists and is sufficiently accurate for professional users, jewelry, dentistry, prototyping, etc. Let's talk about Prusa Research SL1 main features. Some of the Prusa open source resin printer's most interesting features include Accuracy this resin 3D printer is able to 3D print layers of 0.01 mm thick. Tilting print bed, according to the manufacturer, this avoids layer shifting and stirs the resin. Resin level sensor, the SL1 is able to detect if there is enough resin to complete a 3D print or not. FEP VAT film, the resin tank boasts flexible FEP film which is affordable and easy to replace. Open material compatibility, users may choose any type and brand of resin. The SL1 also boasts a number of user-friendly features, including auto calibration, a quick-release build plate, vapor extraction, and a full-color LCD touchscreen. Additionally, Prusa Research manufactures a 2-in-1 washing and curing machine. Prusa Research Original Prusa SL1 Price The manufacturer price of this Prusa resin 3D printer is going for around $1,700, or $2,400 with the washing and curing machine. The Prusa SL1 resin 3D printer is also available as a DIY kit, for around $1,400, $1,800 with the 2-in-1 machine. What is SLA, and why is it interesting? In short, SLA uses a UV light source to cure select parts of a UV-sensitive resin. This resin sits in a build tank and has a special transparent window that the resin won't stick very well to. Prusa SL1 uses something called MSLA which is a masked SLA process. The masking of the UV light is made with an LCD photo mask and generates an image, imagine a silhouette, of your object on this window and cures the resin in contact with the window. This process generates a cured layer. When one layer is complete, the printer raises the build plate to allow the liquid resin to seep in under the already cured resin. When the process is repeated you can see an object dragged out of the resin. The term SLA and DLP are heavily debatable and although the Prusa SL1 does not use laser-based stereolithography, laser SLA, they're using the masked SLA, MSLA, which goes in the SLA category. Prusa SL1 Software Software is also extremely important. Prusa's main goal is open source hardware that's good, really good. Prusa Slicer includes an intuitive new UI, with various enhancements. A plethora of keyboard shortcuts makes accessing settings easier than ever for hardcore typists. New manipulation controls make cutting, scaling, rotating, and moving objects easier than ever, with white guidelines and markers around the objects in question. Better graphics means that Prusa Slicer can now show textures on objects far better than previously. All of the new features make Prusa Slicer incredibly easy, and efficient to use and add a whole new range of usefulness to the already powerful slicing engine. Overall, easy enough for even a complete novice to use, Prusa Slicer could represent the future of slicers for makers, especially given its continuous support and updates with powerful, adaptable features, and a huge array of settings that can be tweaked for the absolute best printing results in practically any situation. Let's talk about unboxing. I received two large boxes from Prusa Research. One contained the SL1 3D printer and the other contained the optional washing curing station. I started with the unpacking. Everything was well packed and attractive. First impressions are everything, and the SL1 and CW1 delivered a great first impression. I was surprised at how heavy the SL1 was, it is mostly aluminum with a big linear rail and ball screw for the Z-axis. 
The CW1 is also well built and contains a stainless washing container and rack. Once set up, I plugged everything in and powered up. The first task was to connect the SL1 to my Wi-Fi network. The SL1 has built-in Wi-Fi and Ethernet. The connection was simple. The next step was to check for firmware updates. None were available so it was time to move on to calibration. First, a couple of comments about the SL1 handbook. Prusa gets an A plus for their documentation. It was complete and really well designed documentation. Now into calibration. I read the calibration process in the guide and then turn to the machine. The control panel is beautiful, full color, crisp and clear with a beautiful LCD display. Let's just say that the colors are clean and crisp. Black background with orange and white text and icons, very professional looking. The settings button takes you to the calibration procedure. It is a quick, 5 minute, process and you only have to do it once. Make sure to follow the calibration process very carefully, otherwise, you will fail to 3D print. The LCD display includes full color photos of the actual process, this is really nice. Also, the printer comes loaded with pre-sliced sample models for you to print. Now to the fun part, printing. Prusa included 480 milliliters Prusa orange resin, so I have a little to play with. Here is one of the included files, Patron Lookout Tower. It is the standard SLA model everyone must print. The detail is fantastic and I loved it. At this point, I washed the print with a squirt bottle filled with IPA, and cured it in the CW1. I didn't have enough IPA to wash it completely in the CW1, I have 5 gallons of 99% IPA arriving next week though. Now, let's take a look at the original Prusa curing and washing machine, CW1. Post-production in SLA printers tends to be quite a mess. Bathing the prints in isopropanol, IPA is a hazardous but necessary process. Without a post-production machine like the CW1, this meant literally getting your hands dirty and washing the print in a bucket full of 99% IPA solution, and it is not an easy process. That's where the curing and washing machine comes in. It combines all three post-production, washing, drying, and curing. It makes post-production a breeze, and more importantly, less messy. In conclusion, the original Prusa SL1 is a real plug-and-play 3D printer. We didn't have to do any tweaking or fiddling around to get printing, we just plugged in the Prusa SL1, followed the calibration process, loaded it up with some resin, and started printing. The whole process was easy and generally hassle-free, which is a lot different from typical SLA printers that require a lot of manual tweaking, calibration, and other fiddlings to get good results. The SL1 just works. At $2,400 and up, though, the original Prusa SL1 is also one of the most expensive 3D printers we have tested, and it is expensive to run. For professionals and anyone else who relies on 3D printing, that won't be an issue. The original Prusa SL1 will cost a lot up front, but will be worth it for the easier and fantastic printing it offers. As always, thank you for watching our review on this product. Also, if you are interested to check this product out yourself, you can find the link in the description down below. If you like and found this video helpful, don't forget to give a like, comment, and to subscribe.